Good morning. Welcome to a day in the life living with eosinophilic esophagitis. So today I thought I'd just kind of give you a taste of what it's like to, to live with this disease and how, uh, how we have to deal with eating and, or trying to eat and how to deal with the fact that it's very tough to swallow food. What happens in EOE is your esophagus gets inflamed because of an allergic reaction and it continues over and over as long as you're continuing to eat those things or breathe those things you're allergic to and until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until your esophagus is so small you can't eat or you can't swallow food and, and maybe even having trouble swallowing liquids. So to start my day, this is usually my scenario where I start with a, a shake of some sort, fruit shake, and I'll show you what I do and, and why I do it. Um, the key with EOE is trying to figure out what you're allergic to and eliminate that from your diet. The trouble is they can't test you for a billion foods or ingredients. All they can test you for is kind of the main ones that they think people are allergic to more frequently. And so I've got a list of those. They, my last one was they test me for 45 foods. I was allergic to all but 12 of those. So it makes it kind of limiting of what I can do. But at the same time, there are, there are a billion foods out there that they don't test you for that I don't know if I'm allergic to. I don't have, I don't feel a reaction, but I very well could be allergic to them. So I'm going, going through that, trying to figure all those out and get tested for more things and, until I can get a list of things I know I'm able to eat. At the same time, it's even more complicated because allergy testing is not a not pure science when it comes to EOE. They haven't concluded that allergy tests will determine those triggers that are the things that trigger your EOE. So, but I mean, it's the best choice we have. There's no other way to figure out what it is other than trial and error, trial and error. So that's what I do. So anyway, so my morning ritual is is pretty much this. So I make some, get some fruits, a little bit of veggies. Uh, I'll do a cucumber because it's good for taste and I'm, I'm pretty sure I can eat cucumbers and that's why I peeled it because if I am allergic to it, it's probably mostly in the skin because I found that in apples. A banana, a um, little bit of peaches because peaches are worth positive on my test, meaning I could eat them. Blueberries I love. I haven't been tested for them yet, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm okay with them, I hope, because I'd love to eat them. And some grapes, which again, I haven't been tested for either, so I'm trying to line a up a test for all these things so I know I can eat them and I know I'm safe. And some spinach. So again, I don't know everything, so I try it, see how I feel, work, work on it for the week, see if it's getting worse or getting better, and it's hard to tell, so that's why people with EOE struggle a lot. Um, what happens in EOE is it can get so small. I actually, the last time I had a choking episode, I would break my pills, a small pill um, that I was taking, just a small pill, I'd break it in fourths. So one little fourth of a pill, a tiny little fourth of a pill, and the pill was probably no bigger than, I don't know, it's, it's way smaller than that. Um, and it got stuck in the top of my esophagus. So this is my, the beginning of my esophagus. Here's my throat, here's my esophagus. It's like, it's so small and you take a big boulder of food and it won't go down. It just stops right there and they can't breathe. So a lot of people, most people with EOE have a problem down lower where it, the stricture is down low and food gets impacted or stuck um, or it's hard to pass, but it's down low where they can breathe. With mine, the stricture is way up high. And so when I choke, it's, could be the last thing I ever chew or try to eat. So it's, it's a little more dangerous and, and I have to be very, very careful about what I eat. So when I do eat, I'm the slowest person in the room to eat because I have to chew so much and make sure it's almost liquid before I swallow it. Otherwise I'm, I'm choking and having to get a Heimlich maneuver, which I won't even get into that. So there's my, uh, my breakfast. Looks great, nice and healthy. I'll take some pomegranate juice, which again, I hope I'm allergic to because I don't have a test for that, that I know of. And then I'll take some water, pour some water in here. And then if I have the liquid vitamins, so I, I, I always work on trying to get my nutrients in me. So I'll take my Centrum chewables because I'm not swallowing pills. I haven't swallowed any pills for 20 years. I crush them now. And a little bit of minerals for vitamins and minerals. And so this is, I mean, this is not too bad. I mean, it's some pretty decent nutrition to have every morning with a lot of fruits and so this is my lifesaver the little Nutribullet I use this pretty much every day to make some of my meals and I blend this up and drink it and there's my breakfast so um, 
We'll get into lunch when we get there and dinner when we get there, but that's when it gets more complicated. This is the easy meal of the day. Okay, so breakfast is really my most balanced meal of the day, even though there's really nothing solid in there. It's just fruit and a little veggie and some juice and water, but it's got some nutrients in it. The rest of the day, it's shooting in the dark, just trying to find something I can eat. And, and just with the limited things I know I can eat and that I'm okay with, um, I just snack on them, eat a little bit as I go. So for example, uh, for lunch today, I had a banana with some cashew butter on it. I can't eat peanuts or most tree nuts. Cashews I'm okay with, so I'll put this on a banana and eat it. And I'll eat some cashews as a snack. I can't have soy sauce or soy, so I can't do most beef jerky, but I did find this by searching around stores. It's beef jerky without soy sauce. It's just got uh, brown sugar and sugar and vinegar and all that in it. Very salty, but it's good. It's beef jerky at least. Um, for my missing my chocolate, I used to eat chocolate all the time. Now I can only eat dark, dark, dark chocolate that tastes really bitter uh, because there's no milk in it or anything like that. Uh, so it's like coming up with stuff that I know I'm okay with, but right now it's really tough because there's only a handful of things I know I'm okay with. Um, the rest of it is questionable or I don't know or, or I know it's bad. I, drink, I don't like water, so I'll drink a lot of carbonated water because I'm so much a soda drinker ever since I was a kid. And that was one thing that killed me is I'm allergic to corn. So no more corn syrup, no more sodas. And so I had to cut out Dr. Pepper, my favorite drink, until I was at the beach and went to the store. And we just, of course, like I do every store, look around and read ingredients and see what I can find. And I noticed they had Dr. Pepper there with sugar in it instead of corn syrup. So I was like celebrating, jumping the aisles, doing backflips in the store. And I bought out everything they had there since they don't have it in my town here. So I can drink Dr. Pepper again. Thank goodness, I just have to drive two hours to, to get more of it when I run out. Um, so that's really my day of, of finding things to eat and, and I'll run out of those quickly. And, and I've eaten a lot of salmon because I can't, I mean, most of the rest of the solid stuff and proteins I can't eat, but salmon is okay and seafood is okay according to the test. So I'll eat a ton of salmon, snack on smoked salmon, cook a big salmon for dinner. And so that's kind of my big bulky meal of the day I'll eat something like that. And I may eat even canned salmon, which is not very good, but it's something. And so that's really what I'm doing until I learn more and more about what I can eat and get them to test me for more things, which um, they're trying to come up with those, so I can start adding things to my list of things I can eat. Um, I've been off of, I've been on this, basically a six food elimination diet, minus the seafood because I eat salmon and that's okay. Um, plus a bunch of other things like corn and, and things that aren't part of the six food elimination diet. Um, so I've cut out a ton of food so it limits me as far as what's available. And so I'm always just searching for something new to add and watching myself as I eat it, see if I feel any different or feel any worse or better. And I'm just working on it. It's been a few weeks now and uh, I, I feel better during the day, but when I eat, it's still tough to swallow. Um, not as bad as it was, so hopefully that means I'm getting a little better and, and I just keep on watching and keep on doing it. So there's my, my day up until dinner and I'll catch you back at dinner. Tough day today. Lots of those lately. It's uh, 3.30 in the morning. Just been up watching TV. Stomach pains, growling. Did okay for breakfast and my shake, drinking that down. It's not that hard to drink a shake. Tried to snack on a couple soft things for lunch and didn't go down very well. By the time I got to dinner, just had no interest in trying to eat. Even though you're hungry, it's just like you're risking your life every time you try to eat something. Especially when any food gets stuck up high, where if it gets stuck, you can't breathe. So every bite is like risking your life disheartening, depressing, scary, and it's just exhausting. Every time I try to eat something, I feel like I'm running a marathon and it's exhausting. 
this disease is frustrating. I just the, the whole way you look at eating food and, and food in general changes. You just the things you take for granted. It's just uh, becomes try to get enough nutrients in your body to not waste away and to keep yourself somewhat nourished. It's more like a chore than it is a regular habit. I just hope they come up with a solution for this soon.